Hey there, we're going to take you through a series of videos that will give you a general overview of Bistal 360 features. In this video, you will learn the fundamentals of monitoring. To set up monitoring in Bistal 360, we have to go into the monitoring and notification area and go into manage alarms. An alarm is the first thing you need to create when you want to monitor a Bistal environment in Bistal 360. An alarm is a logical container of monitoring rules. So what we will do is we will create an alarm and we will monitor the different sections of Bistalk by configuring how we want them to be monitored and associate that with the alarm. So first, let's start by creating the alarm as a placeholder for the monitoring rules. We can click New Alarm. We have to assign a name for that. So we're going to call it Demo Alarm. And I'm going to specify an email ID for notification purposes. We can also set up a description that will show in the email notifications. It can be used for multiple reasons, uh, self-documenting of the alarm and the notification. We can also opt to create the alarm as disabled for maintenance purposes. This would avoid the alarm to validate the health conditions and generate alarms. So this is the basic settings of the alarm. In the next two tabs, we will define how we want the threshold alarms and the regular alarms to work. So the threshold alerts allow you to be notified when a threshold is violated. We need to have this option selected for this uh, type of alerts to be enabled. We also must define for how long a violation needs to happen until you're notified. This is to avoid false positives uh, for things like when you are restarting a host instance and the health monitor might be checking that particular host instance at that point in time. You can also limit the number of alerts you receive per violation. This is to avoid a lot of emails and alerts just to say the same thing over and over again. Another interesting thing to be notified is when things go back to normal. So if an alarm becomes healthy, you will receive also a notification informing you of that event. Another option we have for alerts is the ability to limit in time. So you can choose which days and times the alarm is enabled. This feature might be important for scenarios where you have multiple teams each working in different time zones and you want the alerts to just be targeted to that particular team when they are on duty. So this is it about threshold alerts. Let's go into the status alerts. And you can think of status alerts like a health check. So you will receive an email notification at specific days and times that you choose stating how is the current health of the environment. So I'm going to choose every day of the week, 9 a.m., to receive one of these status alerts. This will allow me to start the day knowing how is the health of Bistalk. I'm going to click OK to create the alarm. So now the alarm is created, but there are no monitoring sections configured for it. And that's what we're going to do next. Let's start by first configuring monitoring for Bistalk applications. So I'm going to go into the application section and what we have to do now is to select an application that we want to monitor. So I'm going to start with the EDI application and let's start first with artifact monitoring. So artifact monitoring allows you to specify how do you expect a particular artifact to be running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all the orchestrations available in this EDI application and I'm going to specify I expect all of these to be started. Immediately you can see that the expected state column has been assigned and you can also see the current state of these particular artifacts. What you can also see is that the orchestration tab is showing red and this means that orchestrations are not running in a healthy state and this is because the expected state is not matching the current state. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you how this looks when the expected state is matching the current state. So I'm going to select all the orchestrations and make them match. So as you can see, I've changed the expected state for the orchestrations in this application so that they correspond to the current state. And now the orchestrations are reporting healthy. So what this allows is it to specify how do you expect your environment to run so that if there is any deviation, you will be alerted. 
The same concept applies to receive locations. So here we can choose which receive locations we want to configure for monitoring and we can specify what is the expected state. So I'm going to specify that I expect my receive locations to be enabled. I can do the same thing for send ports, so I can select a send port and specify how do I want it to be running. So with this, I'm doing artifact monitoring for my orchestrations, receive locations and send ports. So the next thing we'll cover in application monitoring is service instance monitoring. And what this functionality allows you to is to monitor the service instances running on this particular EDI application. You can specify thresholds for the different types of service instances. The most common monitoring rule that people define here is they want to know when they have suspended messages. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select that I would expect to monitor this application for suspended messages. And if there is an amount of suspended messages that goes ab above my warning threshold or error threshold, I will get a notification. In this application, I don't have any suspended messages, so these actually show healthy. So I just finished setting up monitoring for my EDI application. So now let's go and set up monitoring for another application. I'm going to select this application, customer order routing, and I'm going to start again by specifying artifact monitoring. I don't have any orchestrations in this application, so let me move to receive locations. And here I'm going to specify I expect this port to be disabled and so that my receive locations are showing unhealthy. And on the send ports, I'm going to specify that I expect them to be started. So now I'm doing artifact monitoring on the application. Let me move on to do service instance monitoring. And in this case, I'm also interested in knowing if I have suspended messages. So I enabled both of these suspended resumable and suspended non-resumable service instance monitoring. And you can see straight away that I have some suspended resumable messages, 1,438, which is above my warning threshold and error threshold, and therefore it's showing as an error. But let's imagine that the warning thresholds for this application should be different because this application normally has some suspended messages. So I could choose to have a warning threshold of 1,000 messages and an error threshold of 2,000 messages. And now the suspended messages count falls within warning threshold, so between warning and error thresholds. Another interesting capability of having service instance monitoring on a per application basis is that it allows you to cover scenarios that are more complex. For instance, you could want to monitor dehydrated messages in an application. And this could be an interesting monitoring for applications that, for instance, are consuming a web service that is external to the best of solution. If that service becomes slow, it's normal that you will start seeing accumulated messages in Bistal. Normally, you would have service instances in the dehydrated state. So what I can do to avoid that is to monitor also this application for dehydrated messages. So allowing for a flexible way to understand how is your environment running. You can also specify monitoring for other service instance types that will cover the scenarios of your applications. So this is quite powerful and flexible to your scenario. So now that I'm monitoring two applications, let me move on to the next section. And the next section is to monitor BISTOL servers. In the list here, you can see all the available BISTOL servers in the environment. And I'm going to select this one. This is a single machine deployment. That's why I only have a server. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable monitoring for the available sections in this server. So the sections available for basic server monitoring of BISTOL servers is DIST monitoring, system resource monitoring, event log monitoring and anti-service monitoring. I will start with disks and system resources and monitoring for disks and system resources is very, very easy. It's just enabling a toggle. This will activate monitoring for disks assuming the default thresholds. You can change the thresholds to adjust to your requirements. In a similar way, you can toggle to enable the system resource monitoring. Again, you can change the thresholds to adjust to your needs. The next section we're going to look at is anti-service monitoring. This allows us to monitor anti-services in a similar way to artifacts in applications. So here what we can do is we can choose anti-services 
that are relevant in a BizSock environment that you want to monitor. So I'll start looking for empty services that are BizTalk related and I want to make sure that they are running. So I've chosen the BAM alerts. I will also choose Enterprise Single Sign-On and I'm going to choose the Rules Engine. And I could select any other number of empty services to be monitored. Now that I selected the ones I want to have running, I'm going to accept the expected state for these to be running. Another thing we could do is services that you don't need in this particular environment, you could also specify them to be stopped so that you're not consuming resources in this machine. After this, I could be monitoring, so for services that are important to be running in this environment and that are important to be stopped in this environment, so that I guarantee my machine is running as I expect. Next section is to monitor for event logs. And the way you implemented event log monitoring is quite powerful. We actually allow you to create a filter against your event logs and then evaluate the health based on the rules you specified against that filtered event log. So I'm going to give you an example here of monitoring for some BizTalk related errors. You can choose the event log where the events are stored. In this case, I'm going to start with application and I'm going to select some uh, BizTalk related event source. Then I could know the event IDs I'm looking for or look to all the event IDs existing in the log. In this case, I'm going to specify event ID 1000 just as an example. The next option is to specify a text that is contained in the message so that we filter the event log for this particular text. So you could type here, for instance, an error string that would be searched against your event log. And so this describes the condition with which we are searching the event log. And then in the next screen, we're going to specify thresholds to apply against this event viewer filter. And since I'm interested in errors and warnings, what I will say is that I want to be alerted when I have any number of errors or warnings above zero. And I don't want to know about information, and I'm just going to put a high value here so that it doesn't trigger. And then this will be analyzing the last 30 minutes at every time it evaluates health. So now that this is configured, I'm going to click OK. And immediately, BizTalk 360 will run this filter and evaluate the health of this particular filter. And since there is no matches, you can see this BizTalk errors and warnings entry is actually reporting healthy. We can have as many event log alerts as we want, and they can be as specific as required for your particular needs. So with this, we are monitoring the whole BizTalk machine for basic server monitoring. We are doing disk monitoring, system resource monitoring, event log monitoring, and anti-service monitoring. So let's move on to the next section, which is about monitoring SQL servers. So this is very similar to BizTalk server monitoring, but in this case, it targets SQL server machines. The SQL server machines in this list have been manually added to the environment. We don't have discoverability for SQL server. So now we will select this SQL server and we will do a similar setup for monitoring disks, system resources, event logs, and NT services, but now targeting the SQL Server machine. So I'm going to quickly configure this. I'm going to enable disk monitoring and system resource monitoring. I'm going to choose a few NT services. So since this is a SQL machine, I'm going to select SQL Server for monitoring. This is just as an example. I'm going to select this. SQL Server, SQL Server Analysis Services, for, and I'm going to specify they should be running. And I will select a few other services that I want to be in a stopped state. And then I'm going to go into Event Logs, and in this case, maybe I want to know about SQL Server errors. And I'm going to look into the Application Event Log, and I'm going to select a few of the SQL Server related entries. In this case, I'm just going to leave the defaults. If there is any SQL errors, we will be notified. And now we are monitoring this SQL server for basic server monitoring. Again, we're monitoring disk system resources, event logs, and anti services. And the next section is going to be to monitor SQL server instances. 
In this screen, we are listing all the SQL Server instances referred by BISTL Server. So I'm going to select this SQL Server instance where all my SQL jobs are stored, and now I can define monitoring for the SQL jobs. SQL jobs are very important in BizTalk, so we should monitor them to be running successfully and to be configured according to the best practices. So what we could do is to say, I expect all jobs to be enabled, and I expect all jobs to be running successfully. And immediately you can see we have two expected columns, one for expected job state and one for expected last run state, and then we have the actual job state and last run state. And then we are color coding here the problems identified immediately by BISL360. And in some cases, this that has been identified is due to specific requirements of BISTALK. For instance, the message cleanup job, it should be in a disabled state. So I'm going to specify that expected job state. And now that it's matching, everything is healthy with this job. Another specific job in BISTALK is the manage ref count log job. And this job, it never ends, it's an infinite loop, and so you should not monitor the last run state. And now I'm monitoring the jobs according to the best practices, and I can identify the problems in my environment. Monitoring SQL jobs is the monitoring related to SQL Server instances, and now let's move to the next section. And the next section is about BizTalk environment monitoring. In here we have different sections available, monitoring host instances, monitoring web endpoints that belong to the solution, and monitoring database queries, and monitoring message box viewer. So let's start with monitoring of host instances. And this is very similar to monitoring artifacts. So you can choose the host instances from the list, and we can specify what's the expected state for those. In this case, I'm going to specify I expect them to be running. I could also specify all different other states, like stopped, disabled, or if I had a clustered host with clustered host instances, I could specify at least one active for those types of instances, and this would allow us to monitor these host instances as part of a clustered host, which is that you must have at least one of them running per host. The next section we're going to look at is the web endpoint monitoring. And here, this feature is used for you to monitor web endpoints that are important in your BizTalk solution that you want to guarantee that they are up and running. What we can do from web endpoint monitoring is specify a web endpoint that you want to guarantee that the reply is the expected reply. So just as an example, I will use our BizTalk360.com website for monitoring purposes. So what I just specified is a name for this web endpoint, what's the URL, and what's the expected return code. As soon as I click OK, we can see the current return code. And this will allows us to know that bistall360.com is returning 200 and that it's up and running. We can have as many web endpoints as required for your solution, and this helps understanding the health of web endpoints beyond the BISTAL boundaries. The next section of monitoring is going to be database queries. And so what we've implemented in BISTAL360 is the ability to monitor an environment based on the results of running a SQL query. It's very common that people manually execute queries to validate the health of an environment. What this feature allows is that you store the query inside BISTAL360, and the BISTAL360 monitoring will run the query for you, evaluate the results, and alert you if there is any deviation. So let's uh, use this for a very common scenario, like evaluating the spool depth of your BISTOC environment. You can actually target any kind of SQL instance and SQL database for these queries. In the second screen, we will specify the query that we want to monitor. In this case, it's a simple select count star from spool. Spool depth is an important metric from a BISTOC message box database, and so it's important to know when it goes beyond a certain threshold or when it becomes unsustainable. So we're going to use this query to retrieve the count of uh, messages inside the spool, and then we're going to evaluate it for warning conditions and error conditions. So I'm going to say if this uh, spool size is above 1,000, it's going to be a warning condition, and if it's greater than 10,000, it's in an error condition. 
Now, Bistal360 has executed the query and it has retrieved that there is 1,448 records, which is between 1,000 and 10,000, and so it's in a warning condition. An important requirement for these kinds of queries is that they are scalar queries and so that return values that can be evaluated by, by our threshold evaluation. You can have as many database queries as you need to verify the health of your environment and it can target as many SQL instances and SQL databases as you need. And the last section for monitoring is the message box viewer. And what we provide here is monitoring for the message box viewer reports executed and created by Bistel360. So when we run message box viewer, we parse the results of the report into Bistel360. And here in monitoring, we allow you to specify your error thresholds. So errors identified within message box viewer that you know are false positives. And then whenever a new problem happens and message box viewer identifies it, you can be notified by Bistel360. So you don't have to go and manually run message box viewer and you don't have to go and manually check the report. So generally, it would be a good idea to have zero critical errors, and it's very common in message box viewer that you have some non-critical errors, so you should define what your false positives are and put that number in. So in this case, I'm going to specify 35, as this is the, the number that has been uh, resulted in the last execution. Now I can hit save, and this is actually showing healthy for now. If message box viewer identifies any new problem, we will be notified of that. So now we've gone through all the sections. So we configured application monitoring, we configured BizTalk server monitoring, SQL server monitoring, SQL server instance related monitoring, and BizTalk environment monitoring. After all of these monitoring sections are configured, we can go into the monitoring dashboard. The monitoring dashboard has been built automatically and it reflects all the monitoring sections that we just defined. It allows to have a view on the health of your environment. You can immediately understand which sections are contributing to an unhealthy environment. Additionally, you can also click on the problems. If you click on critical one at the receive locations in this particular application, we can see that this receive location, which is currently enabled, is expected to be in a disabled state. So we have a very good description of the problem with these receive locations. And let's say if we, this was misconfigured, we could go into the receive location configuration and we could adjust monitoring for this particular section. We can see the description of all types of problems by clicking in the warning critical problems identified. The health of the top node in the monitoring dashboard reflects the most unhealthy node in the subsequent levels. And so you have an idea of which branch contributed to the health of your system. In the default full view of the monitoring dashboard, we have the applications as a branch in the screen. If you have a lot of applications to be monitored, this can become quite crowded. So we created also a collapsed view that puts the applications on the bottom so that this tree doesn't grow too much and that you can fit more applications in one screen. We also have the alarm mapping screen, which helps you to understand which sections are configured in this particular alarm. And if you want to remove any particular section from monitoring, you can delete it from here. If you want to navigate to a particular configuration of this alarm, you can click on the section and it will navigate to that particular section. And now that we have an unhealthy alarm, it's expectable that some alerts have been generated and sent. So we can go into the alert history screen to see which alerts have been generated, to whom, and if they have been sent out of Bistel 360. So we have two tabs, one for email notifications, for which we can see two have been sent, and we also have the SMS notifications, so if we had configured SMS notifications, we would see them here. So now let's take a look at one of these alerts so that we can see what's the information contained in the email. This email is a down alert. It means that the alarm became unhealthy. And so it sends out uh, some information about what became unhealthy. So we can see all the sections that are being monitored, what's the current health state, and a summary of the problems as well.
So in this case, we are monitoring two BISOC applications and we can see which areas within the applications are healthy or not. We can also see in more detail which application issues are happening, in this case related to this second application. We also see the BISOC server monitoring summary and the details. Then we see SQL Server and the details. We see also the SQL Server instances and the details. Then we see the BISOC environment summary and also the details. So with this email, you can understand what's not healthy in your environment, and then you can log into BISOC 360 to try and do a deeper analysis or even resolve the problem by making the system healthy again. When the alarm becomes unhealthy, you also receive an alert notifying that you, everything is back to health, and it also shows you a summary of the health of all the artifacts, which, as expectable, will show everything healthy. In the meantime, I resolved all the health issues related to this alarm, and so an up alert has been generated. You can see here from the alert notification screen that an up alert has been just generated. So we can quickly review the alert that is sent to you as an up alert. So in this case, the email contains all the summary sections showing healthy, which shows that the environment is now fully healthy. And this is all from BISTOL 360 monitoring.